At this point, you really can't say that they don't care about the game. Just before this, they rolled out a silent update and an official update, and now we got another smaller update. They keep coming out, so let's go through it right after Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is an automated service that lets you trade skins instantly for a fee, sign up now, and get up to $5 bonus. Simply add items from your inventory, then find skins that matches your current balance. Site offers live support 24-7. You can also top up your balance if you're missing a few dollars, and there's a lot of skins to choose from. Visit my link down below to get to Skins Monkey. Yes, this is a smaller update, but still classy enough to cover for a dedicated video, along with some behind the scenes stuff as usual. Speaking of behind the scenes, Valve silently tweaked the new alternative Bob setting from yesterday's updates. I'm referring to this one that you can see on the right, which is new to the game and on by default, but you can of course disable it. In my last video, I essentially said that it's nice at least that they're experimenting with Bob again for CS2, and seeing how a lot of people didn't like the new Bob setting, they did in fact tweak it a bit for today's update. Sadly, my comparison is not the best, but the main difference is that it doesn't sway nearly as much as yesterday. You will still ride the new Bob setting as a horse, and that's maybe something not a lot of people will like. Still, it's cool to see, but I still think Valve should have made a patch note for this in general. Speaking of patch notes, let's start with the biggest news of the update. 50% throw strength grenades are now guaranteed if both attack buttons are held long enough, then released within a short time from each other. You can sort of guess already what this is about. In the past, we had to rely on scripts to throw consistent middle jump throws. Middle jump throws are when you hold down mouse 1 and 2 and release them together to throw it at 50% strength. Problem was that it was never guaranteed to throw at 50%. It was more or less 45 to 55%, maybe a bit of exaggeration. You might also remember a nade update that was released a while back. This update focused on fixing a bug where grenade throw strength adjustments were sometimes delayed. And another one here is you can now get an intermediate strength grenade throw without a delay by pressing primary and secondary attack simultaneously. In my old video covering this update, I even said, in worst case, it isn't perfect referring to middle jump throws not being consistent. So this update that we got just now makes it consistent. Finally, the secret sauce is basically that they are accommodating for the imperfection of releasing both mouse buttons. So if you're a few milliseconds off with the release, it's fine. It's still going to throw at 50% strength. These kinds of updates are a push towards making the game less reliant on scripts. And overall, it's a great update. Another fix for this update is the in-game bot avatar images not reloading correctly after pause menu was opened. I mean, this one speaks for itself and this wasn't something I had an issue with or noticed it being an issue. The same can be said for this next one where they fixed behavior of the previous round button during demo playback, referring to the button that allows you to go back in the demo. Another fix is for clearing a button binding through the in-game settings, which apparently was an issue and probably tied to when they started moving over to the scan codes to work with all the different keyboard layouts. We then get this one, improved performance of telemetry display HUD element. Yeah, so some people noticed that having the FPS counter on the screen reduced your FPS in the process. This is not normally a bad thing, I mean you're adding more stuff to the HUD, but the performance drop was quite significant, as Thor pointed out, from his own system at least, and some other people reported the same thing. I think Valve wanted to address this really quickly because, well, if people are trying to squeeze out as much FPS as possible, then showing the FPS would be counterproductive if it means worse performance. Now I haven't seen a benchmark yet for the improved performance with this update, but we can trust Valve that it's better. The whole point is that you should feel comfortable using an FPS counter without it affecting your FPS too much. Lastly, we see normalized volume of night mode music kits, but there's an even nicer explanation of that patch note thanks to Jericho on Reddit. And we also see some stability improvements, which is most likely in response to the game crashing for a lot of people. In other news, last update before this one, Valve disabled reports for multiple offenses, meaning you can only select one option now. The question is, of course, why? If you think about it, you're never a happy person when you're reporting someone. And some people, when they get mad, are going to hit every single option. I think making players choose the real reason for a report helps with understanding the reports better from Valve's POV. So this change is probably just to get more accurate reports. But in the scheme of things, it's still an interesting change. It at least shows that Valve cares about the type of reports that come in and hopefully means less cheaters in the end. The final bit of news is a tease for the new cache that FMPone is working on and and it's beautiful. This map in particular is exciting because we might see it in the future, considering how Valve has taken a liking to it in Counter-Strike's past. Peace.